I'd like to introduce Debbie Workman for our infomercial of the night. She's here to tell us uh, more about how Liturgy of the Hours can be worked with her busy schedule as a wife, mom, secretary, all around everything to some of us. Thank you, Cindy. As promised, each Tuesday we are including an infomercial on Liturgy of the Hours. For 20 years, I've been a member of the Lake Carmelite group that meets here in Wichita. And as a Carmelite, I have been enriched not only by the insights of the Carmelite saints, but also by the continual encouragement at monthly meetings to pray the divine office. The two most important hours, morning and evening prayer, happen to occur at the very important hours in our family life. In the morning, the children need breakfast and we're all going off to school and work. In the evening, we are telling each other about the day as we prepare for supper. What is the option here? The ideal is to invite the family to pray the office with us. Prayer routines are very comforting for children, even if they just sit on our lap and listen to the adults talk to God. Morning and evening prayer offers us a consistent means of sanctifying our day by praising God in the morning and thanking Him in the evening. Establishing a prayer routine, as you hopefully already know, requires not just one firm decision, but an ongoing commitment between work schedules, because work schedules change and life happens, so the routine has to be tweaked, sometimes tweaked a lot, and sometimes tweaked often. For a long time, the only thing that worked for the crazy mornings in my household was for me to rise earlier than everyone else and pray during the blessed quiet time. But I want to share with you that even in the quietest hours of the dawn, when no human being is interrupting my thoughts, distractions are my unfailing companion at prayer. That's where I've found help in my Carmelite spirituality. St. Teresa of Avila, mystical doctor of prayer, complained of distractions all her life. On the one hand, she understood that some of the distractions were from the enemy. God allowed her to see devils sitting on her breviary. This made her feel all the more determined to resist the crazy thoughts that would enter her head because she realized that some of those thoughts came from evil spirits. But on the other hand, she also came to understand that the faculty of the imagination and memory are separate from the intellect and the will. The brain's memory is a computer index that constantly processes and catalogs every bit of data that's been taken in. It is not really something we can control. So now if your brain is urgently distracting you to remember to buy something for your child's lunchbox, grab a notepad and jot it down if you're praying alone. And that can help um, silence the alarming alarm bell in your head that just keeps ringing. But if I'm starting to replay a scene for the movie from a movie that I saw last week, it helps to raise my heart to the Lord and give him a look to let him know that my heart wants to pray even if my brain is very uncooperative. Our part is to resist getting discouraged, never to give up, nor to be too harsh on ourselves. Discouragement is the devil's favorite tactic. He loves to try to make us feel ashamed so that we just walk away feeling we haven't prayed very well, so why even try? St. Teresa of Avila persevered to get rid of demon distractions. One day, seeing the devil perched on her prayer book, she made the sign of the cross and he went away, but he quickly returned. Finally, she found that sprinkling holy water on him made him flee. At that moment, she beheld several souls being released from purgatory, and she realized that the devil had been trying to impede her prayers. Although her prayer was full of distractions, by her perseverance and sheer desire to please God and communicate with him, um, our Lord was pleased and rewarded her with the joy of seeing the fruit of her prayer, namely the release of those souls. So let's not judge the quality of our prayer of the divine office by how well we pay attention. And have you ever been to Mass with an unruly child? Did you ever get to hear the homily? Did you feel that you got nothing out of the Mass? Sure, sometimes we feel that way, but we're there every Sunday and often many weekdays because we know by faith that we are being blessed, our families are being blessed, and the whole world is being blessed by the mighty prayer made with Jesus our high priest. But it isn't always dry and distracted either. I often get to take away something from every hour of the divine office that I pray, a line from a psalm, an antiphon, or a reading. There's usually a little kiss from the Lord, 
a little nudge from the Holy Spirit to give me some light in some area of my life. Although it's the prayer of the church, and therefore less personal than other kinds of prayer, it provides a foundation for my personal prayer life. It immerses my prayer in Scripture, the Old and New Testaments, and improving my knowledge of the Word of God. It immerses me in the seasons of the liturgical year, and it unites me with the Pope, bishops, priests, and every nation across the globe. If you pray the office regularly, and not just randomly when you happen to have some time, when you build it into your life routine, it guarantees that you spend some time in prayer every day and serves as a building block to your entire spiritual life. I'm sure you already have some of your favorite prayers. How many people I know have their treasury of prayers wrapped with a rubber band around a wad of holy cards and leaflets and litanies? They are very important. The divine office isn't in competition with private devotions any more than the gospel is in competition with private apparitions of Mary and the saints. They complement each other. They are all inspired by God. Between the official prayer of the church and our private prayers, we can say with busy King David, seven times a day, I praise you, O Lord. Next week, we will discuss digital software for praying the divine office. But now, as they say in the military, enough talk, let's shoot. Father Bernie and Jesus, our high priest, will lead us in night prayer. Let us ask our Heavenly Father to drive away temptations and bless the world with strength for the new day.